I'm Olav Carter. I am from Pittsburgh. My connection to CMU is my family has been going here for uh, a, a long time now. And uh, between uh, family members going here and teaching here, I've also grown up here and now I go here. Uh, my name's Alicia Wormsley and I uh, have a teaching research and teaching fellowship at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, I've also been adjuncting here for about five years and um, I grew up in Pittsburgh. I was born and raised here. I left, I went to school and then I lived in New York City for 10 years um, and I've been living in Pittsburgh since then. Well, first of all, my name is Kevin Amos and uh, I've been here at WRCT for quite a number of years, actually since the 80s. So I've uh, seen a lot of uh, folks at CMU come and go down over the years. I started doing radio in the um, 70s, late 70s, uh, when I was a student at the, uh, at the University of Pittsburgh. Back then, we were um, exposing people to a lot of new sounds. WYP was playing rap and hip hop. So was uh, some folks at WRCT were starting to do that too. Um, that's because people were from different places and they were growing up with the music, uh, especially the people that had grown up in the New York area. I'm Shea Cobain. I'm a hip hop producer here in Pittsburgh. I've produced locally, nationally, and internationally here. I'm transitioning into more visual pieces of my musical production, so I'm becoming auto-visual at the same time. I'm a native here. I've been living here all my life, and I'm just a, a true East Side Pittsburgh boy. Like, I support anything positive here, so even if you have, I, you can always email me. And, you know, I'm having a, if you're having a seminar or something, I will be there. I just love good music and learning new things. That's Shea Cobain in a nutshell. I've been holding down Sunday mornings like for a long time here here at the station. People are kind of like to uh, get up and listen to me on Sundays because uh, it's a good good mix of um, what I call great black music from the Ancient to the Future, which I borrow from the AACM. But, you know, it's, it's true. You know, we play jazz, folk, blues, reggae, R&B, black rock. You know, spoken word, all kinds of different things to uh, uh, turn people on to. Some stuff people know, and some people they don't. Some things they don't know. So I try to like educate people. You know, uh, in the process because that's what uh, part of like non-commercial radio is all about too. You know, to educate people as well as and entertain them. CMU it, it helped out a relative of mine and a real good friend. Um, James Armstead Brown, he was a graduate from Pitt. He has started his arts program right at CMU. Um, right now it's at um, um, Weston House High School, I believe. So um, they gave him his chance, and he started getting funded through there. And um, him and his friend, um, Amos Levy, they ran the program together. It was about uh, multi-production, um, uh, video, music. And it brought a lot of young kids from the um, inner city part of Pittsburgh in to learn these things. And there's not a lot of programs like that that will let, the, you know, the youth just come in and learn with, with no problem. It was, I think it was basically free. You know, I never even really thought about CMU. I just think they're in Oakland, you know, like it's Oakland. I know that's disregarding the people who have lived in Oakland. Um, because there are communities of people who live here that aren't students and aren't a part of the universities, but uh, it's just not my experience. Yes, yes. Um, CMU was always like a part of Oakland culture. Um, I've never went to school in Oakland, but I used to be a person that come down here and hang out a lot. And um, CMU, um, it's more reserved than Pitt and Duquesne, but it it also did a lot of good, do, do a lot of good. Every time I come up here, I see little functions that 
will help minorities, to help women. It, there's a lot. Um, now I'm speaking upon it. I remember that Sim used to sponsor um, history fairs there. I think the first award I ever won was at CMU for a Black History Award for doing a um, thing for George Washington Carver. So within that, I do I will say CMU has more input within the city schools that are here, also. And I think Pitt does a better job. Like I, you know, like you're. They have events that are open to the public all the time. There are things, you know, like I spent a lot, I went to Pitt all the time when I, um, when I was younger and they have programs, like I went to like a medical explorers program. They had like outreach in the high schools and like different, you know, and, and middle schools. I went to like public middle school, so they were outreaching there. And, you know, so I wonder like what is the, but Pitt is a state school. It's like a, you know, um, whereas Carnegie Mellon is a private institution. It's definitely isolated, for sure. I don't I don't know of any, like, city events that the university really joins in on. Most of it is, like, specifically CMU students, and I, I haven't, besides, like, people that I've known from just living here in general, I haven't met anyone new in the city, really, or done anything new in the city besides things that I've like put myself into doing nothing the university hasn't really pushed for anything regarding that and I definitely think they should I know Pitt does a lot of stuff like that but um no CMU is definitely lacking in that field well you know all all the schools like to keep um their students doing things within the university framework but it is okay to venture out of that I think the only thing that's different um, of me working here is that now I see how, you know, and I'm an adult, now I can see how isolated this place is from the rest of the city, um, kind of in its own bubble, uh, you know, especially because I teach in the art school and, um, but I, you know, have like a community, like I'm a part of the community of artists in Pittsburgh and um, except for like a couple people, um, I didn't have any interaction with any, you know, staff, faculty, or student body really um, before I started working here. I've known various professors that have worked here for years and years and years. You know, they've always reached out to the African American community. Uh, sometimes I wish that us at Ebony Spectrum, the show that Rick Adams and I do, would have more access to a lot of people at the university, but that, that takes time and that takes like um, knowing knowing different folks in different departments. And it's been like a changing of the guard down through the years. I think CMU is, it, it feels like they're tossing a bunch of players into the ring and hoping that they'll figure it out. Some recent things like the map thing, I kind of like frown on that because, you know, one of the missions of WRCT has been, always been out to reach out to uh, people in the community, you know, and bring people from the community in to do radio if they want to do that. So that opportunity has never been, like, out of the picture for a lot of people. And just how it happens, a lot of those people from those different communities have to be in some of those non-targeted areas that we're talking about, you know, because I grew up in Homewood, you know, and uh, I went to grade school in Point Breeze, and me and my friends, went, we used to walk from uh, Point Breeze and Homewood down to the Carnegie Library, and we passed Carnegie Mellon all the time and stuff, you know, and we'd see different things here, and um, I don't think so much we came on campus because we were kind of young, but we knew about the university and stuff like that, you know. I had a couple friends of mine that, that went here. Um, when I was going to Pitt, they were going to Carnegie Mellon, you know. Um, so they were heavily involved. And these are, are black alum and black alumni, you know, that went to uh, Carnegie Mellon. So I've always known about the station, and I've always known the impact that it should be having on the community. Um, now, this recent thing is kind of like a little disturbing, you know, to say the, say the least. Um, I don't know how that... Uh, happen, 
but a lot of students at Carnegie Mellon do venture out to the other communities, whether it's on a map or not, you know, just to just to explore different things. I've seen students from Carnegie Mellon at the uh, at the Home of Black Arts Festival. You know, I see them at events in East Liberty. You know, uh, they've been at different events in in all the surrounding neighborhoods. So that's kind of crazy. But CMU, it, it it helped put some more education into like places like East Liberty for the kids to uh, try to do new things like entrepreneurship. Whenever I was in like elementary school, we primarily learned that Pittsburgh was a big steel city. It is still a steel city, and it always will be a steel city. Then, in addition to that, that like apps like Uber and Duolingo and companies like uh, FlySpace Productions are blowing up all over the place and it's also really cool to see how they connect to CMU because there are so many people that are going to work for them and it's just it's kind of helping the city get this culture shock and it's really cool. You know the structures the ways development practices all of that needs to be redone you know and really thought thoughtfully done and I don't think Duolingo did that at all. People were scared of change at that time, um, people believed that everybody, they wanted to do the change and people wanted to move out. And to me, it's like East Liberty, it, it needed some type of culture for us, for, for the, I would say, the youth at that time. Because I grew up there in the 90s and it, it was hectic. It was real hectic there. And, um, we it definitely like changed it needed to change people's perspective of what urban life is here we have a lot of new terms for the same old stuff it's the same old stuff but if you really want to do this you have to do it and it's all right to bring your cultural background into it but remember that you're trying to um coincide with someone else's cultural background in the same time you know so you don't want to force yourself on them about what you know you know but you want to learn from them about their culture and how you can incorporate it into some of what you're doing I'm not saying steal what they're doing but incorporate it into what they're doing and that way people will open up more and talk to you more about it you know um Either you're going to go all the way through your communication process or you're not. You know, if you're not going to do that, just leave it alone. I think for the sake of the artists in the school that they should be going out and seeing what's happening um, in the world or in the greater Pittsburgh area. Um, I think it strengthens any person's practice. You know, I think that's why, like, we've like slowly put restrictions on the projects of like you have to do your projects at least a mile outside of this campus and doing different things. I also think it, like I said, it has to be reciprocal, like, you know, just in the fact that this place has so many resources, why not offer those resources to the greater public? I mean, it's a friendly environment for students who are here, but I think if you made it a much more public reaching out environment, then it'd be really cool and beneficial to the campus and to the community in general. Well, there's, there's always that possibility of them reaching out more if they, if they want to do that. If they choose not to do that, they choose not to do that. You can't force them to do that. But in this day and age, we talk so much about diversity and inclusion and this and that, that should be happening. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not a discussion. You just go do it. You know, quit talking about this stuff in 2020. Just do it, man. You know, this is stuff that we were talking about when I was growing up in the 60s. I think like just the sheer workload of the students in the school and feeling safe and, you know, being, um, being like, uh, intimidated to go out you know they're already you're already pushing yourself socially to be here in the first place so um, I can see why it would be hard for a young person to like exert themselves into a space. It's hard for students to get out when the curriculums keep them inside all the freaking time. 
So, you know, if you if you want to see the communities improve around you, the bottom line is you have to reach out to them. Keep the communications process going. See, the one thing in Pittsburgh, I don't feel like we that that people will intrude. Like every new person is is it's good for them to check out everything. Like go to places like Boom Concepts. Just go to like any event that you see that interests you, like on Facebook or anything, and then go ahead and then network with these people. The people here are really friendly and they're really good with new ideas. And um it's just like I would just tell you, don't be shy. Just you you have an opportunity, you go for it. And everybody here is willing to learn something new. So don't feel like, you know, you're not the, you that your ideas don't count because you're not from here. No, no. We, it, it's easy to adopt a new way of thinking and have people have a new way of 